I'm thinking you have a good story or two about Jim Hurd. The best one in the world. You know, I told you I like to drink. Mm. Best, best one in the world. And, and back in the day, I like to wake up drinking a beer and drink till I went to bed. You know, on the way to the matches, back from the matches, at the bar, you know, but I always did my job, never, never missed a show. So, and that's all Mr. Barnett cared about. You know, he didn't care about your personal bit as long as you come done your job, which that's the way it should be. You know, uh, he didn't care, but these other ones, they, they, and, and not necessarily. All of them, but they all like the food with me because I just look kid and, uh, you know, they get mad because Mr. Barnett didn't care if I drank a beer, you know. But I never had one guy complain that I messed a finish up or that I throwed up or something stupid or I forgot to finish. Never done that. They told me to go 30 minutes or an hour. I did that. So it wasn't really nothing. It was just them. Like Ric Flair, he he didn't like it. He said, you know, so I alcoholic, but yet after the show, he could go, he could go and to the bar and get toe up, take his pants off and shake his stick around and stuff. And that was cool. You know, it just double standards, and I wasn't one for them. You know, that's a that's a reason I uh I was just very blessed and I didn't have to, I didn't, you know, I was lucky. I worked for Barnett and I'd go home to Tennessee and I didn't have to, they didn't like me. They liked to use me because I draw the money. Plus they didn't have to give me no money. They liked that. But as far as me as a person, or they didn't think I need to be in the business. Well, some of them, I didn't think need to be a promoter either. So hmm. we even on that deal too. With Jim Hurd, did he ever try and give you oh, some? Oh, Jim Hurd, let me some, tell you this yes, story. Yes, please, yeah. Let me tell you this story real quick. So the last time I come back, it was WCW. Like, I left and went to Tennessee. So Eddie Gilbert started booking. Well, he got me on back down there. But the deal was that I couldn't drink. I was an alcoholic. And I said, I said oh, okay, okay. And – uh so anyway, Jim Hurd comes up to me. We, we, I had to go to the office. They had to, I'm sitting at a table with Flair and I don't know, all their little committee. I, I'm having to listen to them tell me what I need to do and not to do. And uh, so anyway, Mr. Hurd, after it was all over, Mr. Hurd said, Tommy, come here a minute. And I didn't know him. I didn't know he was a pizza man or whatever. I didn't know what he did. And uh, he said, Tommy, I hear, I don't know if you do or, or not, but I hear people say you have a drinking problem. I said, well, I said, I don't think I got a drinking problem. I don't get in no trouble. I said, uh, blah, blah, blah. He said, he said, well, let me give you this example. He said, whether you are or whether you ain't drinking, he said, Say there's this little tavern over here, and you and your buddy standing out in front of it, you know, just standing there talking. Ain't been in, ain't had a beer, ain't done nothing. So somebody's gonna ride by that says, There's Tommy Ridge drunker than hell over there. You know, and, and that that was a good example, but at the same time, I thought, well, I still do my job, you know, and I and I don't give a shit what people say about me. You know, as long as I can do what I want to do and be happy, and and uh, they nobody loves these wrestling fans no more than I do. After forty five years, you know, I love, I still love coming to sign my autographs. I love coming and hearing the stories from some of these, like here in West Virginia, we used to run up here quite a bit, and I had quite a few folks that were old that come up and said, we really appreciate you, Tommy, you know, blah, blah, blah. And that makes you feel good, you know, and it, and it makes you feel good that you made them feel good. 